Hi, I'm Dr. Damon Langeth. I'm a clinical immunologist at the Wesley Hospital and at Sullivan Nicolaides Pathology in Brisbane. Uh, I'm involved in running an immunology laboratory, uh, investigating autoimmune disease, looking at proteins that our bodies make that attack our cells. Antibodies are proteins produced by immune cells in our body, supposed to be targeting things like bacteria and viruses to help protect us against those things. Uh, they ward off infections and allow us to continue a long and healthy life in the vast majority of cases. In some people, however, these antibodies target our cells. And in a few numbers of those people, they then lead to chronic disease, which are often termed antibody-mediated autoimmune disease. Some examples of autoimmune disease include systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's syndrome, immune thrombocytopenia, and celiac disease. These can occur in people of all ages, including in children under two and in people over 90. They are more common, however, in the 20s to 30s and in females more than males. Autoimmunity is very complex and we're only really at the beginning knowledge of what triggers autoimmunity. We know there are many genes which increase the risk, but most of us have those genes and may never develop autoimmunity. We know that smoking is a huge trigger and in fact, in all autoimmune diseases except one, smoking is an independent risk factor, specifically rheumatoid arthritis. Some patients may only develop rheumatoid arthritis because of their smoking. There are a vast number of autoimmune tests, including ANA, known as the anti-nuclear antibody test, thyroid antibodies, celiac antibodies, platelet antibodies, neutrophil antibodies, red cell antibodies, and the list goes on. Autoantibodies, we thought, once were always associated with disease. If they were present, they led to a disease, albeit it might be in five to 10 years, but they led to disease and damage. We've revised that concept now. We now think that these antibodies in some people may not lead to disease, but be, may be a sign that disease is being controlled. Um, this means that your GP will focus on the symptoms and signs that you give to them. Um, and that way they can determine which tests they might perform to screen for diseases associated with those tests. If you present with signs suggestive of celiac disease, in other words, perhaps diarrhea, uh, bloating, problems eating wheat, then the GP would select the tests associated with celiac disease, uh, but still have a problem in that they can present in people who don't have the disease or who might develop the disease in 10 years time. When you see your referring doctor and they relate to you the results of the test, the finding of a positive test does not necessarily mean you have autoimmune disease. It says that you could have autoimmune disease. There may well be secondary tests that are able to investigate this. In some diseases like celiac disease, that may mean a biopsy of the small intestine or stomach. Autoimmunity is very variable. What this means is that some patients get diagnosed within a day or two. Many other patients might take six months. Autoimmunity is not the same in every person. It's hyper variable. And this makes it a challenge for you and for your doctor to make a clear diagnosis. You need to bear with your GP or your specialist during that time and make sure you relate to them new signs and symptoms that occur, which they may then relate to a disease or to further testing, which may help clarify your clinical situation and lead to the diagnosis.